Keaton's Batman vs. Batfleck, which one is the better hero, and who would win in a physical matchup? Let's find out. Now before we delve into it, there are some things we need to clarify. First, I chose these two Batmans for their similarities to each other, namely their approach to crime fighting, and that out of all the other film incarnations of the character, these two versions are the ones who step the most into the morally gray zone. And by that I mean that most of the other Batmans largely abide by the one rule of not killing, but not so for these two. These two Batmans are also somewhat related, in the sense that Keaton's Batman replaces Batfleck in an alternate universe as we see in The Flash. Secondly, we need to define what I mean by the better hero. And for the purposes of this comparison, I'll boil it down to two things. Their morales, followed by their success in their respective war against crime. So starting off first with their morals, it's not easy being Batman, especially when you're a vigilante without any inherent powers. In actuality, if Batman existed in real life, it's unlikely that he would be able to keep his hands spotlessly clean. Sometimes when push comes to shove and the crap hits the fan, the only viable solution is kill or be killed. Both Keaton and Batfleck have their hands dirty. Both of them take the lives of various criminals, and some needlessly so, such as Keaton's killing of this goon here, or Batfleck's kill of these criminals here. In these cases, one could easily suggest that there were other ways to deal with them without incurring the loss of life, such as knocking the goon unconscious or shooting the tires of the truck and driving off. Specifically for Keaton's Batman, it's somewhat disturbing about the manner in which he writes this goon off, especially with that mischievous smirk which appears to make light of the fact that he's about to end his life. To Batfleck's credit, he has no such devious display of emotion before any of his terminations. But that said, it's quite clear as to who has the higher body count of the two. Even from just those directly shown to us, on film, and without the need for an exact number, I'd wager that Batfleck has a far greater kill count than that of Keaton's. Now, of course, you might say that this is not really a fair comparison, as Batfleck may have been in more life-threatening situations, which naturally calls for greater measures of force. That might be true, but then we still have the added deaths that are indirect, such as the numerous criminals that he marks with his bat brand of justice, which causes them to suffer their demise in prison. This practice is rather appalling and serves to illustrate the extent that Batfleck places himself as judge, jury, and executioner. It's also a sign of his disillusionment with his methods, which we'll get more into later. Surely most of these criminals do not deserve the death penalty. These aren't crime bosses or deviant psychopaths who must be stopped immediately, but appear to be run-of-the-mill felons who commit less heinous crimes. On the flip side, Keaton's Batman does not engage in such a practice with the criminals he encounters, and favors letting the police and the justice system deal with their rehabilitation. So, on the moral side of things, while Keaton's Batman may be deviously smirk at times, on the whole he is still more level-headed and places a higher value on human life. Aside from that, there is still one more subject that sheds light on Batfleck's morals, and that is the survival of his Joker. So Batfleck kills criminals just like Keaton's Batman, but yet somehow his version of the Joker is alive and well in his universe. That is a staggering inconsistency that cannot be reconciled, especially given that this Joker was responsible for the death of a Robin. I think we can all agree that if Batman should eliminate anyone, the Clown Prince of Crime would be at the top of the list by a mile. He is hands down the most destructive and diabolical of Batman's rogue gallery, one whom most would label as irredeemably evil. For Batfleck to be comfortable using lethal force, but yet his Joker remains alive speaks to an irregular display of morality to say the least. It allows his archenemy to continue his reign of terror, which brings us to the next criteria for the term of a better hero, namely their success in their war against crime. Now what we know about these two Batmen is limited based on what is revealed to us. Both of these Batmen started off with a decadent and corrupt Gotham that appears to have a bleak future. For Keaton's Batman, based on what we see in The Flash, based on his own admission, Gotham is now one of the safest cities in the world. A remarkable accomplishment, especially given its starting point, where the name of the city was once synonymous with crime. In contrast, when we look at Batfleck's Gotham, the city is still pretty much in an abhorrent state. I mean, 
the fact that you have top-tier criminals like the Joker being able to frequent public places is a clear indicator that the city still has a long way to go. Same goes for Black Mask as well. Then you have crime lords like Falcone's son being able to steal viruses from the hospital and go on a joyride through the city. Now, of course, you could say that Keaton's Batman has had a longer time fighting crime and therefore has had more time to be successful. That is true, as Keaton's Batman should be somewhere in the mid-60s of age based on the timeline given to us in the films, while Batfleck is about 50. A lot can happen in 10 years, but despite the age gap and even when prorated accordingly, I think Keaton's Batman still has the better success in cleaning up his city. For starters, look at the technology that Keaton's Batman left behind in the Batcave upon his retirement. The fact that he left behind relatively older technology strongly suggests that he retired quite early in his career. And as we've seen in Dawn of Justice, Batfleck appears to be rather disillusioned with his war on crime, to the point where he even accepts the label of a criminal for himself and Alfred. So perhaps it might even be the case that his Gotham City is in an even worse state than when he began. And for more food for thought, in The Flash he even admits that the city might be better off if he just gave away his wealth instead, which hints at how ineffective he feels his crime-fighting career has been. For all we know, as of the events of The Flash, the Joker in Batfleck's universe could still be running free to conjure up his next master plan. Then there's also another factor to consider, namely the resources that Batfleck has access to. There is no Justice League in Keaton's universe, but in Batfleck's universe, he has other superhero allies that he can call to help him. With such powerful friends on his side, it makes it even more disgraceful that Gotham is still in as corrupt a state it's in. By all rights, Batfleck's Gotham should have been on the fast track to become one of the safest cities in the world like Keaton's. So to bring it all home, in light of Keaton's Batman placing a higher value towards human life, combined with his superior success in his crime-fighting career, it's safe to say that he was the better hero compared to Batfleck in this regard. In terms of a physical matchup, though, I think we can all agree that Batfleck would pulverize Keaton's Batman. Although that's not to say that Keaton's Batman is weak, as he has the remarkable honor of being able to stand up to a Kryptonian without any kryptonite in his age of mid-60s. Gadgets aside, and even when we take them as the same age, Batfleck is in much better physical conditioning, having an advantage in height, weight, and strength which gives him the edge in a brawl.